Welcome to Faith and Flower. I'm Robin. Thanks so much for joining me. This week, I've got more everyday homemaking motivation and inspiration as we jump into summer. Summertime has got me craving lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, so I'll start with some food prep and storage. Then we'll head outside so that I can show you how we have been refreshing our outdoor living spaces with lots of color. And then I will top things off with a simple and delicious dinner idea that's perfect for summertime. We really try to eat seasonally and to eat as much produce that is currently in season as possible. And so of course in the summer, there are so many options and I like to gather as many colorful things as possible and then prep them when I get home from the grocery store so that everything's ready for my family to just grab out of the refrigerator and so that those snacks are the things that they will gravitate towards and for myself as well because I know that if everything is prepped and ready to go, then when I'm hungry, I will opt for that. And it's just as easy as opening a bag of chips or something like that, and so much better for you. Besides fresh fruit, and my favorite this time of year are ripe cherries and peaches. I love them, I can't get enough of them, and they're so good right now. But another great snack that I really enjoy is grabbing some celery sticks or some bell peppers and dipping them into some hummus. So I'm prepping these things now so that those will be available for snacking. And also if I want to use celery or bell peppers in a recipe this week, most of the prep work's already been done so that will save me some time when I'm prepping for dinner as well. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and prep these green onions because I have a couple of recipes where I wanna use them this week and that will just save me some time later on. Prepping all of this produce is great, but it's really important that I figure out how to store these things in a way that's going to make them last as long as possible so that nothing goes bad and we can enjoy everything fresh as long as possible. And for a while now, I've been using this Zwilling vacuum storage system. I showed you guys in a previous video how I was using them and I've really been enjoying them. And in the meantime, Zwilling contacted me and asked if they could send me a few more items to try out and share with you. So I have a few more of the glass storage containers and I have to say, I really love these. I always like storing our food in glass. I feel like it's a very healthy way to make sure that our food stays really fresh and that there aren't any chemicals of any type leaching into our food and it's very nice to see everything that you've prepared in glass when you open up your refrigerator so I've really been loving these and I'm still using the vacuum seal bags as well and what's so nice about this instead of using the traditional vacuum sealing machine which I also have is that I can open it up and use these items and then quickly reseal them them. It's just such an easy way to keep things fresh and they claim that things stay fresh five times longer in these storage containers and so far I have to say it's probably true. Lots of times our produce doesn't last that long. We try to eat it really quickly but I have noticed that with things like the bell peppers and the celery that it stays super fresh when I use this. I've been using these plastic bags for quite a while now. I love that you can reuse them. They're easy to hand wash and I just let them air dry. And then things like these corn, I got this big container or package from Costco and with just the three of us, there's no way we were gonna eat it all and I didn't really wanna freeze it. So I thought I would experiment and I vacuum sealed them. We had the first bag within a few days of when I brought it home and the corn was delicious, super sweet, really good. And I saved the other bag for over a week and it was just as good. So I think this is a great way if you don't wanna freeze produce to keep it longer in your refrigerator, but it also works really well in the freezer and I freeze a lot of things in these bags as well. 
Check out the description box for links to these and I always have them in my Amazon store and you can find the link to my Amazon store in the description box of all my videos. I love that the vacuum pump is so small so it easily fits in one of my kitchen drawers and makes it super handy. Plus it's rechargeable, it charges very quickly and the charge lasts for well over a month or two. I've only had to charge mine a couple of times. After our amazing vacation in southern Utah, we traveled through Tucson, Arizona on our way back to Texas. We stayed at an RV park that had loads of citrus trees and they invited us to pick as much as we wanted. They had the most delicious, huge grapefruit <laughs> and we also found some lemons and I even saved seeds from those because I'm hoping that maybe I can grow some trees of our own here <laughs> in Texas. We ate all the grapefruit. We had several and they didn't last long because they were amazing and we love having grapefruit with our breakfast. I did manage to save some lemons though and in addition to saving the seeds, I wanted to fill our freezer with lemon juice cubes. I've showed you how I do this before so I'm going to do that again today and I'm also going to show you my new electric juicer. This was a gift from my parents. My mom had seen my video where I was squeezing all of the lemons and limes by hand and decided that I really needed this. And I have to say, I am so glad that I have it now. It does make this so easy to do and I'm much more likely to do it because it takes less time and it's easier. Plus this appliance is pretty small so it's easy to store and it's also really easy to clean. strainer catches most of the pulp and the seeds so I can save the seeds easily by removing them from here and I'm really hoping that I can grow some of these lemons because from just three and a half lemons I was able to get a whole cup of juice they were so big and juicy and to save the juice I like to pour them into a silicone mold like this it's got a lid so I fill them up about three quarters of the way so that there's a little headroom at the top to expand when and they freeze and this gives me a little over a tablespoon of juice per cube. Once they're frozen and it usually just takes overnight, I can take the cubes out, put them in one of the Zwilling storage bags and once I have the air vacuumed out, they will last a long time without getting freezer burn in my freezer and whenever I need one or two cubes, one or two tablespoons of juice, I can remove what I want from the bag, reseal it and they are good to go again. It takes up so little room and is such a convenient way to store citrus juice.
we got a bit of a late start on planting this season because of our vacation. We didn't want to plant beautiful things in our yard and then worry about whether they were watered enough while we were gone. So when we got back, even though we had triple digit temperatures, <laughs> we were determined to bring some color to our yard. We've only lived here for about a year now and we haven't had a lot of time to do much in the yard because we've been so focused on the renovations that we did inside. But now we're ready to enjoy our outdoor space this season and despite the hot temperatures we got up early in the morning and went to Home Depot and loaded up with lots of beautiful plants that are going to have lots of fresh blooms for us to enjoy for the rest of the summer. We got knockout roses and lantana for the backyard, and then we got another type of lantana and some salvia for the front yard containers. I should also mention that we had a huge ice storm, you might remember, last winter that really knocked out most of the landscaping that we had in these spaces and we just really didn't have time or it wasn't really the right time to plant anything until now. So we're really excited to spruce up these areas and make our outdoor living spaces more beautiful this summer. Just before we were leaving for vacation, I started noticing some hummingbirds in the yard. So I knew when we got back, I wanted to put out our hummingbird feeder now that we're home to keep it full. So I'm just mixing up some boiling water and sugar. I have about three cups of boiling water here and I'm going to add one and a half cups of just plain white sugar. And once that's dissolved and cool, I can fill our feeder and then attach it to the window that we can see in our living room. And and watch the hummingbirds all summer long.
My favorite summer dinner ideas are either using the grill so that I can be outside and keep the kitchen cool or something that is relatively quick and easy inside the kitchen. And tonight I've got one of those things going. I am cutting up a sweet potato that I'm going to roast in our air fryer. I found the air fryer to be such an amazing tool to use in the summertime because it really doesn't heat up the kitchen. It's really fast and the results are always really good. So that's what I'm doing with this sweet potato. To go along with that, I'm making some fish and it is a really easy recipe. Very simple and light and very enjoyable for a hot summer night. I am fairly new to air frying. I know I'm late to jump on the air fryer bandwagon, <laughs> but I am really enjoying it and I'm still looking up the best ways to make some of these dishes, even though they're really simple. So this is kind of a method and I will link the recipe that I use down in the description box along with the fish recipe. So if you wanna give it a try, you'll have all the instructions there. To the sweet potatoes, I just added a little over a tablespoon of avocado oil, salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. I tossed everything together and then it's ready to go in the air fryer. The fish that I'm making tonight is Mahi Mahi. We bought some frozen fillets at Costco that were really good and I wanted to try out a different recipe tonight. So this one calls for lemon juice. So I'm using half of one of those really beautiful lemons that we picked on vacation along with some of its zest. And I'm gonna set that aside and then prepare the fish. I heated up some olive oil in my frying pan and then I pat the fillets dry with a paper towel to make sure they were very dry. I salt and pepper them and then I put them in the pan and let them sear on each side for about three minutes. In the meantime, I put the prepared sweet potatoes into the air fryer, set it for 10 minutes, and then I just stopped it about halfway through to shake the basket just to make sure they were evenly cooked. After the fillets have been seared on both sides, I put them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for just five minutes to finish them off. And while they were baking, I started on the simple sauce. In the same pan that I used for searing the fish, I added butter, the lemon juice, the lemon zest, and I didn't have chives, so I used some of the green onions that I chopped fine that I showed you earlier, and some garlic. Basically, you can add salt and pepper to that, and that's it for the sauce. It's really easy, very fresh and delicious with this fish. I just stirred it together and let it simmer for a few minutes until the fish was ready. And once the fish came out of the oven, I could top it with a sauce. The sweet potatoes were ready and we had dinner in no time. This would also be great with a side salad, but with all of the fresh fruits and veggies that we've been snacking on, this was really enough for us. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. I would love to hear from you, so make sure you leave a comment below. And if you haven't already done so, I want to invite you to subscribe. It's absolutely free and easy. All you have to do is click on my picture. I will be right back here on YouTube next Sunday at 2 p.m. Central Time. So I look forward to you joining me. And until then, have a wonderful week.